Welcome to the Family Life Center podcast. Thanks for joining us. We hope this message encourages you and helps you connect with God. For more information, visit us at familylifecenter.us. Now, here's this week's Sunday message. All right, you got me, Josh? All right, good morning. So has anybody ever seen the movie Up? So do you know what a squirrel moment is? I have lots of those. So if I start a story and I don't finish, talk to me after service and I'll finish the story. Uh, but no, uh, Kent Falstead, the new director, a fairly new director for Spencer Lake Christian Center. I'd like to uh, have my lovely bride of 31 years please stand. Yes. So, what what a great reminiscing drive this morning coming from Opaca here. 78 degrees, beautiful day. But coming here back to the Rio family. So, with that, I see Family Life Center. So, knowing it or not, you guys have went through change with, with a different name, with maybe decorating or setting up your sanctuary a little different and stuff I, since I've been here. So, that ties into today what I'm going to talk about with transition. So, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank Pastor Sean for uh, giving me the invite to come and give an update on camp. He said he's streaming me online as he's traveling. So, uh, yeah, if I create a big mess and uh, you guys can just apologize for me when he gets back. No, we're, we're good. But uh, one thing he asked was if I could share what the importance of camp is. And that's difficult to, to do in a, in a 20, 30 minute time frame. But I will do my best. But before I get going, I just want to ask a favor. If you've been in a youth group with Kent or Cheryl Falstead, or if you've been in a Royal Ranger outpost with Kent or Cheryl Falstead, please stand. Wow. So, all right, Josh, yeah, you're like not wanting to stand up. So we're good. Thank you. Because it's neat to see the transition in youth lives. I saw on Facebook, Brandon just graduated from Portage. So uh, I was catching up with him just for a minute when he was trying to put a microphone on me and stuff. And I said, hey, how you doing? Good and this and that. And I reached over to him when I reached up. I, <laughs> Yeah, right? And I grabbed his heart and I said, hey, you, guys, you still have Jesus in your heart. He said, you taught me well. So I did my best, but I will, I will continue to say this. There's perfect and there's imperfect. I, I'm somewhere in there, try, striving for perfection, but I am a vessel that the Lord created. Now, however you view me, that's the way I am. But uh, as we get going, I'm going to talk about Spencer Lake and, and a whole bunch of stuff just to create some excitement for you um, about camp. So, uh, next slide, please. So, t talking about transition, for those that know me, I served 23 years in the United States Air Force. Military was my life. It was my family's life, service to our country. After I left the military, I thought I was in my dream job. I was working for the Wisconsin Department of Veteran Affairs. I was traveling around the state helping veterans and their families be aware of benefits, programs, and services that they um, were eligible for from their military service. 
I was at the King Veterans Home in Wapaka, Wisconsin. Got caught up in a, a little bit of a leadership change in the state, and I'll leave it there. But sometimes you can be a little bit too straight and narrow for some employment areas. But uh, I say the Lord pulled the carpet from out underneath me because I was in my comfort zone. The day I got paperwork that I was laid off from a state job, at the end of the day, I went to find my wife. She was walking the dog, but uh, her parents were at the cottage at Spencer Lake, so I stopped, and they were like, hey, how's your day? I'm like, well, not so good. In, in, in a little bit, I don't know if my mother-in-law was trying to make me feel better, but she goes, you know, the camp is looking for a new director. In one ear, out the other. It did not compute, did not register anything. Well, that was September 10th. September 11th is kind of a memorable day for veterans. And I uh, was at an event, and at this event, at the Wapaka home, you know, I had all these veterans, and we were doing a ceremony, and there was a chaplain there that went to Wapaka first, Assembly of God. And he comes over, and, and we're talking. I said, hey, man, it was nice working with you. And what? You're leaving, blah, blah, blah. You know, camp's looking for a director. Okay, so I've said this before. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but two days in a row is going to create me to stop, maybe pause, and ask my wife what she thought. So uh, we decided to check into it. Long story short, I am the new director for Spencer Lake Christian Center. So... I'm transitioning from military to ministry. Because when my, bo my boss, John Davis, let me greet you on behalf of the superintendent of the Wisconsin Northern Michigan Network for the Assemblies of God. When he introduced Cheryl and I, he said, Kent, I believe Kent and Cheryl have been called into this position at this time. My, my head went, I'm like, called? That sounds a lot like ministry. Because it hadn't computed yet. So, uh, I am embracing my call to ministry. So, as you come to camp and you see some of the changes and, and some of the, I don't want to say the military protocol I'm putting in place. No, all the kids going to camp. What, we got to be up at 06 for, uh, for PT? No, I'm just joking. But next slide. So I'm just going to go over quickly my vision for Spencer Lake. I told John Davis, I don't want to work my whole life. I said, the next five to seven years, I will give you until the Lord changes that time frame or, or I change it for my boss, right? Because, uh, uh, but no, uh, so next slide. There is information out on my table in the lobby, so you are more than welcome to grab it, just to put it up on your fridge. Keep praying for camp. Camp is under attack. I'm using a military term for a reason, because we are in a battle these days. I personally think the culture is at battle with our youth. There's a lot of confusion out there for our, 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 our youth and our young adults and, and in, in, in our society. But uh, I, I believe because of all the things that we're dealing with right now. But uh, this is my, I'm calling it the Spencer Lake Vision Campaign for the next five to seven years. So as you see that new lodge, that building is built. It's sited, it's HVAC, they're doing landscaping right now, they're finishing the trim work. That is going to be available June 14th. So, yes, so 50 kids, 50 people can sleep in that with, with a counselor in each room, so on and so forth. 
50 kids are going to be sleeping in a quality environment at camp. Camp has some very nostalgic aspects of it. And I don't want to go too nostalgic because my wife will yell at me later. But, you know, when, when she was in the, in the tabernacle as a kid in the pews and you had to wear a dress to, to service and you sat down in your dress and your pantyhose stuck to the varnish of the pew, a little bit of nostalgic. We've got brand new chairs in, in the worship center now. So, but when I talk about transition, like you have here, camp needs to keep transitioning. Has anybody ever been to the Dells, been to the Kalahari, the Great Wolf, any of those water parks? Once you've been there, you're spoiled. When you come to camp, you're expecting a little bit of that type of environment. I can't give you the Kalahari, but I'll give you the best that people... People that invest in camp, I'll give you what people invest in. And all I want is make sure we have a safe, healthy, clean environment for people to come and seek the Lord. So uh, some of the other camp improvements is uh, I have uh, proposed an underground pedestrian tunnel. We had, a, we had a young lady get hit in 2019 at family camp, and her name is Lillian. And I believe Lillian is recovering, doing well. Thank you, Lord. But that is a risk I want to prevent. So uh, that is in the works. It would not look exactly like that. I can talk to you more later about that. But uh, um, just some definitely needed things. But the other thing is you put that in where people can cross back and forth underneath the road. We don't have to post guards crossing attendants to stop traffic and that. There's groups with our large groups. They send eight people to camp just to do those duties all day long. I'd rather them investing into the lives of kids. So ne next slide. So uh, our dining hall currently, I believe, is too small to meet the needs of some of our larger groups. Some of our larger groups are hitting 600, 700 kids a week. So take 700 breakfast, lunch, and dinner in a, in a small area, um, I've got to, to have a great dining experience, you have to give your staff the proper resources to be able to execute that. So uh, that's partly on mine. The, the pavilion, the fire pit swing, the hammock villages, and down the road, this activity center, gymnasium, another worship center, uh, not this this coming week's my first group. The following week, I have three separate groups are at camp at one time. So I need I need worship centers because they do their own worship. So the 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 magnitude of camp, a lot of my personal opinion, I didn't know the 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 depth of camp until I got there, and I go, wow, this is a a larger uh, animal than I thought. So next slide. So 2020 at camp, pandemic's been rough on everything. I mean, just go to Fleet Farm. You can't even find, you know, I mean, a guy who wants something, he goes to Fleet Farm. And, and you know, the pandemic's been rough on supply and, supply and demand and all that. It was rough on camp. The staff I have there have a heart for camp. I had to lay them off. And literally, an answer to prayer that they all came back because they have a heart for the kids and the families that come to camp. The loss of income, I'll leave that up to Rich Lindberg, the treasurer, but it was impacting. Uh, 19 million youth did not get a camp experience last year, nationwide. I I'll just tell you, you know, it doesn't take about a year or two of not going to camp, you lose the interest of going to camp. And I, and I don't want it, because I want our kids to come and retreat. Find that personal time away from mom and dad. Sometimes grandpa and grandma, cell phone, you know, Xbox, PlayStation, you name the distraction, sports. 
uh, retreat at camp. And uh, uh, the other thing is shutting down uh, over 40 some buildings, 120 toilets uh, for a year and a half. That sounds silly, but people that have a mechanical knowledge knowing when you shut stuff down for a year and a half and then when you go to bring it back up, you're repairing a lot of stuff, which, which puts this to it. So, uh, so 2020 at camp was a difficult year on camp, but you know what? The Lord is good and he provides. Next slide. So God is faithful. I am not a patient man. Um, some people call me very passionate or very whatever, but it's just the way I am. You give me a battle plan, you give me the proper tools, I will take the hill, I will execute that plan. And these improvements for camp is, is needed, um, and I'm willing to embrace that. So the importance of camp is what Pastor Sean asked me. And that's a, that's a deep question. Because the importance of camp means so much to everybody in here. Squirrel moment. Kimmy, it was nice seeing you at the piano this morning. Not that that was nostalgic for me, but it brought me back, Kimmy. So, out in the foyer on my table, when I... When I started this job, a pastor sent me this article he wrote. Pastor Steve Nickel. So I want to, I want to declare that so there's not a copyright infringement or anything like that. But Pastor Steve said I could share this. I've taken some highlights of what I'm going to share out of this. So feel free to grab that to get the, the, the whole, the rest of the story. So um, this morning, I want to talk about the biblical precedents the personal excellence and supernatural influence when we retreat. Next slide. So, the, the biblical precedents. If you have your Bibles and you want to uh, open your Bible, or if you want to pull up your phone, or if you just want to look at the screen, several options, kind of like tithing, right, Bruce? All right. Hey, Bruce, and when you stand up, I'll know I've got three minutes left. So, uh, because, right, uh, so in, in, in Exodus 28 through 11, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But He rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. I get it. Old Testament. Days gone by, right? Today, how many people have enough time in the day to get everything done. We don't. But sometimes we let other distractions and things in our life scramble our priorities. There's a little bit of heart check for all of us. Because it's biblical, even though we've went away from it. Richard, the, the old joke says, Farmers didn't have back problems until they put lights on tractors. Think of that. Think of that. There used to be an end of the day when you, you stopped working. There's, there's big operations now. They're running 24-7. It's just go, go, go. That same application can happen in our life as well. All right, so next slide. So then Deuteronomy 16, 16 through 7. Three times a year, all your men must appear before the Lord your God at the place He will choose, 
at the festival of unleavened bread, the festival of weeks, and the festival of tabernacles. No one should appear before the Lord empty-handed. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion of the way the Lord your God has blessed you. But the takeaway from that is, God instituted three annual feasts, retreats, men were required to attend. So, that, that applies to all of us. So, uh, I, re I remember the, the men's outings, Colton, out, at, out out at the farm. Men, you need to make it a priority to retreat and spend time with other Christian brothers, that personal time with the Lord, sometimes those devotionals that we did, because it's healthy for us. Sometimes the Lord speaks to us through another person we're retreating with. Next slide. Wow. Pastors really have to be good to keep this thing rolling, don't they? Uh, so, uh, now I want to get into a personal excellence. Matthew 6.6 6. But when you pray, go into a room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. A retreat gives an extended opportunity to close the door on the pressures and distractions of everyday life. I was uh, probably personally convicted of my personal time with the Lord. If you don't dedicate a time in your day and make it priority, it will get away from you. It, yeah, so in the military we say hua, or you can say amen in church if, if you understand something. Let me know if you agree, but I know that when I set a time before Fox News or before the radio or before anything and give the Lord Him the time He's due, I tend to hear more from Him. Because sometimes when we don't close the door, and moms in here know it firsthand. How many moms have tried to have a devotional when you have kids? When are the kids going to be bugging you? When you're trying, yeah, so, uh, and I'm not going to go too deep into that because I don't want the kids all revolting with me, but, but retreats promote personal excellence as it can be and should impact the health of our whole self. So, it is good for us to retreat. Next slide. So the supernatural influence, Luke 4.14, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit and the news about him spread through the whole countryside. It is interesting to note that Jesus, full of the Spirit, was led by the Holy Spirit on an extended retreat in the wilderness. I'm not telling anybody here to go out in the wilderness for 40 days and personally retreat. It's not what I'm saying. But we need to look back in Scripture and pick out the importance of those times when we separate ourselves to go one-on-one -on -one with the Lord. So, in closing, next slide. I refer to Spencer Lake as a mission field. If we're kingdom-minded, Investing in the kingdom comes in all different forms. Those that faithfully attend here, tied to the church, that's, that's investing in the kingdom for the work the church does. Cheryl and I weren't called to go to Africa or, or some other thing as a missionary, but I almost feel you could call us missionaries. 72% of pastors receive their call in a ministry 
from a camp experience. 69% of our missionaries receive their call to the mission field from a camp experience. I ask our youth ministry director and our student ministry directors, hey, what is the success when kids come to your camp, hear the word, and this and that? 75% of our kids that go to camp are saved at camp and filled with the Holy Spirit at camp. So, yes, I'm not trying, I, really, I'm not trying to preach to you. But what I keep sharing is, what the Lord's revealed to me is, if I'm a financial investor, or an investor in general, and I can find the return on investment in the 72% or the 69% or the 75% of lives, that is huge. Let's not fault, let's not, well, let's not feel bad that maybe it's not those numbers here. Maybe it is, I don't know. But I know even from the two, our two kids, sometimes for them to personally retreat away from mom and dad in, in, a, in a different environment was good for them. Cheryl and I on the way here, we actually said, you know what? We should have asked Blake to come. For those of you that remember Blake, yeah, not quite Brandon. He doesn't sprout that high. But I know, I know camp has personally impacted the lives of my children. Thinking back to a mission trip, Becca, that we took to City on a Hill. Went through a homeless poverty simulation. We slept on concrete floors for two, three days. They took the clothes off our back and made us feel real humble. When we got home, dude, my back was killing me. I'd slept on concrete. It was not fun for an adult. Do you know what the Lord revealed to me? Grandpa and Grandma were at home watching Blake. Lauren got out of the vehicle, walked down the driveway, and Grandpa and Grandma said, how was it? The words out of her mouth is, I want to go back. That's the response we'll get when we give our kids an opportunity to get out of their comfort zone and see something other than their, their normal life. Because that was a form of retreat. Yeah. Well, and to see people living in poverty. I think Milwaukee was the seventh poorest city in the United States at the time. Right here in Wisconsin. So, next slide. If you could pray for camp, pray for Kent and Cheryl. I don't know how many around here, you drive around, you see we're hiring, we're hiring, this and that. Camp is in need of employees to, to clean the housing, 700 beds, 700 meals, when all those people leave on a Friday at noon, we have to have that clamp, camp cleaned, reset up for however the next group wants it by 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock in the afternoon for a new group. So it, it is a very intensive. I, 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 I can see the heart of the staff that are there. They do not do it for the paycheck. It's, an, it's a kingdom investment, I believe, that, that they're there. They, what they see and, and they feel from the, the interaction with the kids and stuff like that. So, uh, I'm not a big business guy, but I, I ran the data for our, for our network of the 200 churches. You're one of the 200 churches in our network. 
And it's as simple as $10 a month or $120 a year for each family in our network. Would more than be enough investment for us to, to keep a, a, a camp. A lot of other states' camps are closing. The pandemic closed Christian camps. But I want, I have a standard for this camp. The last year my son went to Spencer Lake. I hate to even share this story. He said he found six mice in, in the, the room that he was at in the, in the dome. Not on my watch. Not on my watch. Um, that dome was gutted. It was shut down. It was gutted. It's been remodeled. Every ounce of carpet's been ripped out. It's got laminate flooring. It's got new LED lighting. It's like this. It's beautiful. That new lodge is, is, is very nice. Um, and, then, and then as a, a church body, as, as most missionaries hate to do it, but uh, pray about it. Come on board. I'm just looking for a little bit of an investment from every church. And that, that, that monthly giving helps me plan my budget effectively. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, I love it when people just send in chunks of money and, and that because we, we, we use it. But, um, but that continual uh, giving helps me be able to know um, planning for staffing and, and, and all the different things. Here's one month of utilities in July at Spencer Lake is $15,000. One month. So uh, so thank you. I, I know this church has a heart for the kingdom. This church is an, an investing church, kingdom-minded. So thank you for letting me come this morning. Next slide. That's our new mission statement. Our camps exist to provide environments where lives are transformed by Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we look to you for what you want for your camp. Lord, it's your camp. Have your way this year. I, Lord, I believe after the, the year of 2020 with people being restricted and at home, I believe you have big plans for 2021 at camp. Lord, impact lives, change hearts, and have your way. Lord, let me have ears open to hear, to receive the direction you want for your camp. And let me be a great steward with the investment into that camp, Lord. I thank you for this opportunity this morning, and uh, we love you, Lord. Amen. Thanks for taking the time to connect with God. Our weekly services are held 10 a.m. every Sunday at N3974 Williams Road, Rio, Wisconsin, just five minutes southeast of Rio on Highway 16. Please make sure to subscribe to our podcast, visit our website at familylifecenter.us, and connect with us on social media at familylifecenter.us.